Yo, yo. It's DJ Melodic One. And you're locked on to another edition of the Boom Bap Cafe. We got an exclusive interview with Houston MC Anti Lily. But before we get to that, we're going to drop a couple of his joints. I'd like to give a big shout out and thanks to all my loyal listeners that lock on every week to all my mixes and mixtapes. We're now on Stitcher. We're on iTunes. We're of course on Podomatic. We're on YouTube. We are worldwide. It's DJ Melodic One, Boom Bap Cafe, where we play the finest selections in down tempo and jazz hip hop. Peace and blessings to all the MCs that's been hitting me up, trying to get their music heard on this podcast. As long as y'all come with that fire. It's going to get some spins. Trust and believe. So anyhow, for this week's show, you know, we got Anti-Lily. The interview is coming up. Give y'all just a sneak peek just last week. When we talked about a wide range of topics. But right now, we're going to drop the whole interview for everybody to hear. The wait is over. Big shout out to Don't Sleep Records. I see y'all holding it down. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into a couple of tracks from Anti Lily and get straight into this interview. It's DJ Melodic One. Melodic One. Melodic One. Boom back. Boom back. Cafe. Boom back. Cafe. Boom back. Radio. Cafe. Radio. 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 Falling off my prime Feel like the people just don't feel me no more Feel like I done lost more than I can gain And things just don't feel the same I play the game, I've been losing I'm on the edge, hold it loosely Like a leaf that flew and landed in the rain In the peace, just ain't enough I need the whole thing Most days I ain't even got in my conscience But I'll figure out how to cope Without having hope for tomorrow Can't even look in the mirror When I'm swimming in sorrow Living hollow Can't even tell you who the hell I am When I follow these feelings That got me feeling so alone That I done cut off my niggas don't wanna deal with the fam I can't talk to my girl and that shit kill me To watch her till she's filled as I say don't worry Shit, you can feel the pain through the horns Something like the seasons, it be here and it be gone Sister told me she listened to that I told the storm when she going through a daze And pops told me that's just the norm I ain't making excuses I know I gotta do this shit Life is a reminder that we all be going through some shit Told my brother Funix I need some help to get through this shit so in conclusion, I gotta keep moving Cause we all works in progress Nobody's perfect I tell you I'm a work in progress Cause I ain't perfect Nuh-uh. Ain't nobody got the answer So I question so much shit every day I was taught right from wrong But still it's hard to obey Cause I ain't perfect Nuh-uh. Nobody's perfect Nobody's perfect Nobody's, nobody's perfect I don't hold no hatred for anybody who played me I ain't got no feelings for women I made mistakes with One of my exes and old friends that had a baby Crazy how life could put people in different places It's never how you think, it's all about how you embrace it Back in the day, knew she was the one I spent my days with Back in the day, knew you was my nigga defended You thought it was till infinity, but it all had a limit Everything considered, 
I hope the best of y'all for the rest of y'all days. Hope that y'all know more sweet than bitter. Hope y'all teach little man to make his life so bigger than I ever was. True shit, it don't get any realer. Me, I'm just a sinner with newer problems than ones in the past and passed me up, so I dropped them. Regret them fell out my pocket. It ain't all good, but it's all good. Ask me how I am, I just say I'm a work in progress. We all works in progress. Nobody's perfect. Hey. I tell you, I'm a work in progress. Cause I ain't perfect. Nuh uh. Ain't nobody got the answer, so I question so much shit every day. I was taught right from wrong, but still it's hard to obey. Cause I ain't perfect. Nuh uh. Nobody's perfect. Nobody, nobody's perfect. As I reflect, I all respect to those who break their neck to keep their goals in check. I'm focused, shit. My tunnel vision been a little tinted, shaded by visions of things I tried to forget. Now I'm forced to remember how it all fell down. Even the sound of you telling me you no longer want me around. I guess it came full circle. You got the worst of my virtues. Wanted you down, but I was always high. Couldn't reach me when you really needed me. No matter how much you tried to touch the sky, seemed like I was at the peak. And I figured that's where I needed to be To get us where I wanted Now I wanna take a leap Because when you up it all falls down But what you do when it all falls down I'm asking when you up it all falls down But what you do when it all falls I don't know Cause when you up it all falls down But what you do when it all falls down uh, When you up it all falls down But what you do when it all falls If I had another opportunity Probably would just be you and me Ain't nothing new under the sun to see, a scene of the sea Will match my emotions, a nigga got the blues Now I'm playing Red House, yeah, I don't know what else to do That what my baby used to say, but now she moved away Over yonder some wind, shit, I can't even say If she miss me, you're tired of me being in the way Love it like she's not with custom, and I'm the reason she adjusted Now she probably stuck with some guy who could give her all the time Flowers by design, I need some flowers for the feelings that you left behind They no longer here, looking for your face, but it's no longer clear It all fell down, damn it all fell down, but what I do when it all falls down? Baby, I don't know. Cause it all fell down, don't know what to do no more. Cause it all fell down. When you up, it all falls down. But what you do when it all falls down? Let somebody tell me. Cause it all fell down. Don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do no more. Yeah. I don't know what to do no more I hate to see him coming down my eyes So I had to make this Too many times I saw him fill up in your eyes So I had to make this song cry I used to keep all my emotions aside But I had to make this at this point I'm pleaded just for another try So I had to make this song cry uh. Sorry Yo, yo, this is DJ Melodic One, and you're locked on to the Boom Bap Cafe. That's right. Uh, for this week, I got a special guest from Houston, Texas. He's off the critically acclaimed jazz hip-hop label, Don't Sleep Records. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to the show. Anti Lily. What it do? Peace. What's going on, man? What's the word, my G? Word, word, word. How you what, doing? Oh, I'm, I'm good as always. How about yourself? Uh, likewise, man. Doesn't do no good to complain, so we here, you know? Yeah, I feel it. Man, focus. Word. So, anyways, uh, I had a chance to um, uh, check out your biography, um, and I've been listening to your music thoroughly. Um, 
how did you how did you get to the point where you actually got signed um, and started uh, making music in the, in the independent hip hop community? Word, word, great question, man. And I do want to just kind of, you know, start by clarifying. So um, it's more of like a uh, working relationship I have with the family over at Don't Sleep. Um, and even, even with, you know, the folks at Don't Sleep, we're really more of like a DIY, you know. So, yeah, we, we, we're official, you know, as a label. Um, but I'm not, I'm not fine to them. I just have a great working relationship with Sonic, obviously. A1, mm-hmm. who's the man, Tiffany Gilles, who's just, you know, an amazing person. Like, you know, it's, it's genuine love, you know, with all of us and everyone involved. And I'm a really big believer on, you know, moving where the energy is good at. And every time we come together, you know, that's that's what it is. So it's, it's just more of like a, like I said, working relationship. And okay. we just move when it's time to move. Okay. Know? Yeah, because I... You know, I... I'm, uh, Okay, yeah, because I the reason why I asked you that question is because there there are a lot of there's a lot of artists out there, and I, I just keep telling them, you know, you, you got to keep plugging away, and make sh- making sure that y- your music is quality, and you really take the time to network with people, and just out of that, so much can grow. I mean, because you literally went from doing uh, what you're doing, you know what I'm saying, and you just uh, yeah. you, you had a chance to go out there uh, and tour, as in like Europe. And there, exactly. there's a lot of artists, you know what I mean? I keep trying to tell them, you, you cannot think small. You have to think large at all times because what you what you speak on is what you manifest. You know, that's something that we spoke on earlier off air. And just, just showing you mm-hmm. how, just showing you how the, the power of music, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Just to kind of build on that, I feel like anything you're trying to do, whether it's music or any type of a business or any type of dream you have, if you truly believe in yourself, you, you will have that, that long-term vision. But a lot of folks, even, you know, people that I've ran into across the years, they're afraid to take that step. They're afraid to take that risk. Because at the end of the day, even though, yes, Don't Sleep is a label, like we made a lot of those moves. And, you know, we took a lot of those risks to get out there. You know, it's not like we had a, a booking age, you know, we... You know, got on with another label. We did. And when I say we, I'm speaking loosely, like Tiff Eight One. You know, I want to get on a lot of the credit. It's just as far as building with the promoters because even with Funny, they had been out there. I want to say three times. You know, before I joined them this past year, and it's just you build on those relationships, you build on those shows, and you know, at the end of the day, whatever you're trying to do, you, you got to be able to take that gamble because. You know, if, if you don't take no chances, you can't advance. You're gonna get the same stuff you used to get. Well. Wow. Word, word. Yeah, I, I, I've been following a lot of the artists that, that actually uh, that you work with the part of the label. And, I mean, they've been putting out music for, for yeah. a minute. You know what I mean? For a minute. And just to see how... Uh, just to see just, just the growth and just how... Uh, what I see as a revival of, of jazz hip hop in the underground, because I mean I grew up off jazz hip hop. It was it was mainstream, you know what I mean. And and yeah. it went uh, it went underground for for quite a while, and then the sound kind of fell out of flavor. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it kind of fell out of style for a minute. And just to see, just not even just that that sound, just 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 uh, hip hop that's more based off of reality, just just honest hip hop based off people's yeah. personal lives just the just the raw honesty I really see that as really making a comeback you know they, and, and I think it's you know and I, I love jazz hip hop myself but you know I'm from the south so you know even in different genres that's, that's what you know when folks ask what I listen to I tell them I listen to a little bit of everything it's just the, right. when you can tell the story is genuine that's that's more what I gravitate to. Where they had that trap label, where they had whatever label. Like this crazy thing is with hip hop, and I love to have these discussions. Man, it's still growing. You right. know, I don't want to say it's in its infancy, but it's, it's getting to the point where when you think about a genre like rock, you have so many different types of you know genres within that. So many different type of categories, and I think that I think that's a good thing for hip hop, especially where it is now. But the main thing is. I think it's important that you know the history and that it tells you know genuine stories no matter what it is as long as it's genuine as long as the people could feel it like that's definitely on it um 
Yeah, it's dope, man. Like I said, just with the energies, I've known these folks for like five years. But just this tour, that was our first time ever, you know, with me meeting them face to face. And it was just like we've already known each other because, like I said, it's all genuine and it's all love at the end of the day. Right, right. So, um, yeah. So talk about your first album um, and what, what was the inspiration behind that? Like okay. Everything uh-huh. for, like, from so the yeah, title? The first one I, I did was right, yeah, like, the uh, story from the Brad section. Right, right, right. So so how, how did you come up with the title and how did you come up with the concept with that? Okay, dope. So really, you know, when we kind of talked about this online, offline too, uh, with all of the music I create, I don't want to say I create the conventional hip hop records. Like still to this day at 25, but you can get this a venting method or you know a therapeutic method so I, I want to say I was 20 21 around that time and it was just it was a summary to my life at that point and you know that's actually when you know me and Sonic started working together and his samples were really heavy you know used a lot of brass so I was just telling my stories and you know Sonic was my view so that's where the brass section that kind of came from okay uh and, and yeah that's what it is man just genuine real true stories that i've been through and all that i've seen and it's just all culminated on that project and i'm blessed that it even to this day man it's still going crazy you know it actually caught like a second win last year surprisingly you know, okay yeah thanks to the internet <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah Right, the, the power of the internet. I teach people that the, the, the internet has changed the world for, for the better because, see, nowadays uh, people are able to take a hobby and they're able to do so much with that and connect with people and, and just, not just anybody, just the whole world. You know what I mean? Because, like, with, with the internet, with yeah. the internet, it's made hip hop uh, worldwide. So, therefore, you're not just reaching people in your own community, you're reaching the entire world. So, you know what I mean? So, off, off that, that energy and just off those off your ideas it just it just spawns so much you know what i mean so much positivity yeah i agree man and just to build on that too um every, everything is organic and i'm a real big you know component of that like we're not out here buying followers and i go to to you we just out here connecting and building with the people who reach out to us and that was the trip you know yeah i was I've been on since i was 16 Okay. You know, but you know, being exposed to the internet, you're actually able to build with folks who can say, "Yo, man, I feel exactly, you know, what you're going through on this record, or this is my favorite track." Or, you know, you kind of have—I don't want to say like many interviews, but you get to, you know, folks ask you questions like, "What was your inspiration behind this?" And like, it's awesome. Like, it doesn't feel like work, I man. It just feel like you're making new relationships. With right, people. right. And that's just—it's insane, man. It's just it's dope. It's an, it's an amazing feeling. Okay, and uh, I'm always curious, how did you come up with the name Anti Lily? Because, you know, when, when I explain people about your music, and say, you know, people ask, mm-hmm. where do you get that name from? So so let everybody know where, where you got the name Anti Lily from. No worries, man. It's, it's a bit of a weird story. So, well, not really. So my uh, government name is actually Drake, right? Uh, like, the, like the other entertainer. Okay. And... I used to go in my, you know, my legal last name is Lily, so that that's the name I used to go by and around the time, so it was 10 years ago, yeah, um, like 10 years ago, I was 15, and that's really when Drake really started to bubble, and you know, I, I guess I just kind of had this vision before, like, nah, I don't really want to, you know, use this name, so ironically at the same time, as well, that's when I really started getting into reading, and you know, I asked a lot of questions and, and I, I started to learn that, you know, Lily, that's not necessarily my last name. You know, that's the name that the slave master gave to my ancestors. So originally, right. it started off as more of like a rebellious thing, like, you know, anti-Lily, like against, against my last name. And now it's just kind of grown to where I've adapted, you know, anti as my first name. It is what it is, and it just has multiple meanings. So, when I'm anti, especially being music, you know, obviously my sound isn't 
I think it's safe to say it isn't the conventional sound that folks we hear from Houston and you know I try to stay positive so I try to be anti-negative and it kind of branches off and it's really just one of those names that stick and stuff throughout the years so it's pretty much very kind of cool. <laughs> Alright. Interesting. So yeah. Okay, so also um what sure. So everybody, what made you want to rap? Just growing up um in the house that I grew up with and the environment. It was always music playing out. You know, my folks had me in their thirties actually, so Originally, I was supposed to a lot of 60s, 70s music, you know, soul, R&B, you know, so, you know, you got the OJs, you got Marvin Gaye, Johnny Taylor, I could go on and on, and then I was also the youngest, and I come from, I mean, I'm in the South, so I come from a really, really huge family, you know, I still have family members, like, <laughs> They say I go to a reunion, they'll know me, I probably won't know them, that's how big it is, but... You know, uh, as I got older, I'm, I'm the youngest, so I had two bigger sisters. So you're naturally going to be listening to what your older siblings are listening to, or, you know, you're hanging with your cousins. You're naturally going to be listening to what your older cousins are listening to. So, you know, I, I naturally gravitated towards hip hop. And what got me into rapping is it's um, something that you got to hear about music. It's a, it's, a, it's a therapeutic form of, uh, of a release for me. So, you know, that's the power to get my feelings out of still to this day. That's the case, because I naturally don't go to folks and talk about my problems. I'm just more comfortable doing it over the microphone, and eventually I got good enough at it to where people wanted to hear <laughs> what I had to say. And, um, a couple albums later, a lot of songs later, that's, that's how we got to where I'm able to talk to you now. Okay, yeah. And, and, yeah. and you know, your last album uh it's nice outside i mean when i first heard that like to me that was uh that was sp- speaking to a lot of people that i know myself included i mean it was just yeah. just in the last five years just this country is, is going it's gone through so much and just to see how how just through the politics and the nation how just it's affecting everybody mentally speaking and how people can take so much negative that's going on in their personal lives so much negative uh that's going on in the news and just to flip that into art yeah. you know what i mean and to really uh do something with that so what what made you come up with, with the name uh it's nice outside for for your you know what i'm saying your your previous album man i kind of uh i, I want to say a little bit after me and sonic finished the uh, brass section I, I had an idea in idea my head for a moment but you know, just going through that isolation period, you know. I just felt like what we did get back to creating and making music, I was like, man, this has got to be the title. And it was like, oh, man, this this is perfect. And it just kind of fit, you know, my brain just kind of works weird like that. It's like I had the title in my head before we even had any songs recorded. And then just as we started, you know, getting more songs done, more songs I thought, like, yeah, this, this, this is it right here, y'all. You know, this is the one. To, to your point, that's, that's just the last I run, you know, no matter, no matter what the, the weather is, like, people people all have their different opinion on what a nice day is. Some people honestly prefer the rain. Some people like, you know, big days. Some people like a little overcast or a mix of folks. So no matter what you see, you know, it's about, you know, focusing on the positive. Because at the end of the day, you do get the energy that you put out. And no matter what's going wrong, man, it all happens for a reason. And, you know, in my life, just speaking personally, just when a lot of bad things are happening, something good always is around the corner. So it's kind of where I would say the name came from with that. Okay. Okay, so yeah. take us take us through the, uh, the, the meanings behind uh, the, 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 the song you did called Loose Prayers. So, um, so I did, I was blessed enough to grow up in the house with my mom and my dad. Now, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're not really together. They got divorced, uh, right around the time I got out of the house. I was about 17, but, you know, I always kind of got that duality. I got different, different opinions where my mom, 
You know, she's definitely more more religious where my dad he's more like grounded, you know, with the world. So, you know, you kind of hear that in the song. Uh, you know, mommy told me lay out my problems by the Lord. My pops told me problems is something I gotta wear as a black man. I mean, and that it's all necessary to get to where you need to go. So, the idea of the loose of the loose prayers and even something that I'm still struggling with today is my my beliefs and my spirituality. It's just me, you know, bearing my truth and. You learn different lessons going with nothing. It's just like both of their ideals, you know, combined with my mindset at the time is, is where it came from. And my man, Courtney Bell, uh, was LC on the project, but he goes by Courtney Bell and I just blessed me with a with an amazing person. That, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite books off the album, but that's where the idea, that's where the concept came from. Just lessons I would, you know, be taught growing up to you get two different sides, two different beliefs. You know what I'm saying? Word, word. Uh, also, the next song, What Would You Do? What, 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 what is what is uh, the concept behind that song? And, and what kind of sparked that, that type of uh, idea? Yeah, indeed, man. It's a, it's like a, I don't want to say common to age record, but it's, it's like a, a brief look into my childhood and the decisions that I could have made and the ones that I ended up making, um, which led me to where I am today. So, you know, like I said, man, I was blessed to have both parents, but at the end of the day, you know, as a kid, you're gonna get into your shenanigans and you're gonna surround yourself probably with folks in situations that you know, <laughs> you know, you probably should be around. And, right, right. You know, I, I did, I got into some things, but, you know, it took one of my best friends, you know, being sent away and it took me losing some folks just to really understand, like, yo, I, I really shouldn't be doing this and I know, I know that, you know, at the end of the day. So it's, it's me really just, it's a very introspective record and that's something that I definitely, even when I perform it to this day, it, I, it, it's a really personal song for me. You know, as I reflect back on what I could have been, you know, the, the young man that I'm still growing into now, you know, shit just could have easily went up, you know. So, what would you do? Right. That's kind right. of where that, where that comes from. Okay. Now, for all those listening, uh, what we're speaking on is his previous album, Nice Outside. Uh, I'm seeing I'm seeing that a lot of people are really rocking that album and, and, and they're really embracing that. It's it's just uh, in my opinion it's just it's just raw honesty and to me that's what makes hip hop. It's about hip hop to me is about your point of view and just how you view the world. You know what I'm saying? Do, do you agree with that? Yeah, exactly. And you know, music is the universal language and I love the fact that you can like it's it's I get a sense of freedom from it as well, like Shit that I may not be comfortable talking even to my loved ones about. Like I, I could bury it all on the microphone and I feel free. So like I said, it's a sense of freedom and I can't really describe it in any type of a better way. I'm just blessed to be able to do what I do and folks actually want to, you know, hear where I'm coming from. It's just it's crazy, man. Okay. It's amazing. Okay, now. What really sparked my my uh, I'll say my attention with the album is is the voicemails mm -hmm. that were that were that were featured on the album. What, what was what what led that type of idea and, and just kind of elaborate on on just what was going on through, through those yeah. times. Yeah, indeed. I I tried not to talk about saying like I I don't really go to the doctor meeting. I haven't been clinically prescribed or given any type of label so I'm not say that I'm the introvert I won't say that I suffer from depression because I don't think that's fair for the folks that do but you know I go through periods where I, I just don't want to be bothered whether it's by my girl you know my mom my, my closest friends and all of those voicemails are real you know real voicemails and I just wanted to add another label of reality. So when you hear my mom, you know, call her to check on me, just it's, it's, it's because she hasn't heard my voice in weeks. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, when, right. When you hear one of my business, 
when you hear one of my business partners getting in touch with me, it's because it's like I know what I need to be doing out here. Maybe not even that, but you know, I had obligations that I just didn't give a damn about at the time. But one of them, uh, <laughs> probably everyone's favorite, is the one right after I found me. That's actually uh, my probably my best friend Grant. He's done the artwork on all of all of my albums, even the ones before Phonics. So okay. you know, okay. he's done he shot the club for uh, Brass Section, Nice Outside, all of one of the projects. It's like we had some shit we had to accomplish and. Like, I just wasn't in the right mind state. So, <laughs> you know, you hear that raw emotion come out and it's just, you right, know, right. even with my girl, you know. Because, I, yeah, when I, when I, when I heard... <laughs> When I heard those voicemails, I said, okay, yeah, this this man, he really letting you know because um, around that time when I when I heard the album, uh, you know, I had a chance to go, you know, my, my girl actually hit me on to, um, my girl actually does the covers for, for the podcast, you know what I mean? So so we work together on this, you know what I mean? And um, with, right. with that, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, I kind of give her some creative, you know, saying direction with the, with the podcast, you know, to kind of pay homage whatever and, and, and you know so one of her favorite artists is logic you know what i mean and he talked a lot about the mental okay, health yeah. the mental health in terms of just everybody it's, it's just practically it's normal you know what i mean and she's you know she herself is in that field herself in, in terms of helping others with that you know what i mean so so to hear that in an album come from a black artist because a lot of black a lot of black artists they don't really talk so much about you know what I'm saying they they that kind of glosses over make make it as if everything's all right but it's it's okay to be human it's okay you know what I'm saying to go through some downs as well as well as your ups you know what I mean but it's listening to the album just shows the raw honesty of just what an, a normal person goes through you know what I mean so that that's that's what really uh really made me uh, uh become a fan of it you know what I mean. Thanks, bro. That's, that's what I'm still working through. And like I say, man, I, I don't think it's fair for the folks that, that suffer through it. Like, so I don't want to really say what I have because I, I don't know, but I know what I feel. You know, and I do have those periods. Even to this day, I just, I'm very comfortable being alone in my space most of the time. So I didn't want to show that aspect without necessarily saying, oh, yeah, I suffer from this, I have that. Um, but I love the fact that, because like you say, especially in the black household, like specifically in mine, it doesn't get brought up. You're just told, right. like, you know, it's a part of life. You know, you're a man, you know, you're supposed to feel that way. You're a black man in America, specifically, you're a black man in Texas. So you're supposed to feel, you know, a little schizophrenic. You're supposed to feel that pressure of the world on your shoulder. Yeah, I, I agree with you, bro. Okay, I'm and al also... Uh I wanted to ask you about the tour, um, and how you were treated, and like how many dates did you do, and just just how, how did it make you feel to to actually engage audiences from outside of America? You know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah, it. Uh, I, I I feel like look, well, it was about a month or so ago. Like it was for words, like it. Like even touching down, you know, the air smells different. You know, obviously the food is different because there's none of that GMO shit <laughs> in it. Um, like every, just the level of engagement is different because it's, I don't know, man, it's just a, a different appreciation. The fact that English may not even be their, their natural language. Some folks maybe not even speak a leak of English, but when we're out there doing our song, they have to know every word. And you, it's humbling and you know it's some of those same folks that are sending us emails and reaching out to us on these social platforms now you get to put a face with the profile and my favorite part yeah I love rocking the show honestly dude, my favorite part was engaging with our listeners you know before the show after the shows or you know most nights we would you know let them know okay guys we're gonna be at this bar and like a lot of folks have come through and it's just having a good time and that's the, that shit I'll be able to tell my kids, you know? And it touched me on the, on the personal level because, you know, I'm the first one out of my family to either, even leave the country, you know? So it's just, it's crazy. It's not an experience. I'm blessed that I was able to be some, be a part of something as great as that. So we, uh, we were out there only for about seven days. Uh, we had six shows. We sold out. Five. We would have sold sold out. Wow! Them, but, you know, wow! As many as any team, 
Yeah, we had a last minute name to change. So wow, that, that's even the guys that sold up there as well. You know, that that's that's amazing. I I I, I preach to so many people that <laughs> that are doing music that just just to think just think big. You know what I mean? Because uh, again, you're not. You're not signed to a major label, you know what I mean? And and to go from you know being just a regular everyday person to selling, being part of a collective that's that's selling out shows that that's to me that that's that's phenomenal. There's a lot of people they dream of you know being of doing music, and and, and I, f- I feel like you've already accomplished many other people's dreams, you know what I mean? And, I, and I'm and, I, and I'm sure that you dreamed of this yourself, and it, and it came true. So I I know this you know for you to have to hit the stage and all that, I know that it the, the experience felt unreal. Yeah, it's, it, it, like I said, I'll never forget it. You come home, you know, with a renewed sense of energy. Because I've always, like I said, man, I got a few husbands, you know, like I've always been a hard work because I'm proud of myself on. But even coming home, you have a renewed sense of recharge because you want to get back out there. You want to do it bigger. You want to do it better. You want to, you know, lay back up with those awesome people that you have with me. So you're right, you know, you're 100% right. Just, and it just goes back to, you know, being able to, you can be short-sighted. You know, a lot of folks, you know, they, they have dreams, they have goals, but you don't want to put the time, you don't want to put the finances, you don't want to put the effort into it. But when, you know, I'm not even trying to dig myself up, but when you have like that, that hustler state of mind, it's like you, you can see past that. And exactly. You believe in yourself, you know, you believe in yourself and it, it's, that energy is going to always gravitate back to you. One way or another, so it was a win, man, for sure. Okay, and just off the fact we were with so many people. Okay, and you know, I just have to ask, what what were the standout songs uh, that you performed live that it really captured the audience's uh, attention? Um, oh man, they really it's, it was a combination. It really depends on the city as well, because I will tell you, like every city has a different vibe. So, for example, like. You know, Marseille and Paris is more like laid back, right? So any like when I did it's nice outside the actual title track, that was probably um the biggest reaction I got. You know, you know, like city like Munich, cities like Berlin, you know, in Germany that they love the drums, they love their hardcore shit. So right. like tracks like I Find Me and, you know, other tracks other that same thing, like those really got the hardest, hardest reaction. So it, it really depended on the city, but man, they were just so receptive to everything. And you could just tell how excited they were to just have us out there. And it was, like I said, man, I, I know I'm repeating myself. It's crazy, man. Like, insane. I'm mean, as many shows as I've done in the city. I love my city, but you know, I, I can only speak to it's a lot of idol worship or it's a lot of, you know, folks that are too cool to have a good time. It's like I gotta be the coolest person in the room. So I'm, yeah, I'm digging the song, but I'm not really gonna show that I'm digging the song because that's not gonna but they don't they don't care about this shit out there, man. They they're gonna get their money's worth and they know like, man, this this shit is dope, so they're gonna show you. You know, and this it's 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 amazing to have been able to see stuff like that and you know, I posted some recap videos of him to hold me down. It was like, damn, dude, that's, that's crazy, you know? Okay. And were, were you able to network yeah. with, with any artists while you are out there uh, in Europe? Uh, not, not necessarily, because, <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't, we were really the only uh, headlining act, but on the show in Zurich, man, we, uh, Met a dope. I, I definitely got with some dope producers out there. Um, and, and yeah, but it was really a lot just engaging with the people and, and everything else. But <coughs> excuse me, it, yeah, you, you build with who you can. I, there were uh, my girl Victoria, she's from, um, I think she's from Bird, no, she's from Munich, Germany. She's an amazing singer. Uh, definitely got some stuff in the works and then. Going back, you know, we work with, I've been with some producers, so yeah, man, indeed, we always some artists out there. Sure. Okay. And uh, I, I gotta ask you, is, do you have plans for any upcoming projects? Oh, yeah, man, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more of the type, 
you won't see me uh, on the internet, you know, posting every single move I do, or you know, posting studio sessions and, and stuff like that. But yeah, man, we're always working because that's how I I get it off my chest. So I don't want to, you know, I'm not I'm not bad for spoiling. I'm just like when, when everything is ready, when it's time, that's when uh, <laughs> that's not like to put it out there. So short answer, long answer, definitely uh, got some things in the works. Just uh gonna get some more projects out by the end of the year just stay you know staying focused and just need y'all to stay tuned right now <laughs> word, word up because because yeah when i when i heard your your last album it's nice outside i'm like man i cannot wait till he drops some more music because uh yeah just playing your music i just just more and more people are listening you know what i mean i mean i'm doing a lot of work behind the scenes on really making uh just really spreading word of just just so many quality artists i mean what i'm all about mm -hmm. in terms of what i do is 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 i'm all about mcs with, with a good story so that's why like i had to you know reach out to you especially from listening to the music when i first heard when i heard that that last album i was like i, I said to myself i said i have to speak to this guy and i have to uh interview this guy you know what i mean so it's it's it's, yeah, it's, it's good, and you know, like I said, just just the power of the internet is 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 phenomenal. It's it's amazing. People take it for granted, and it just and it can't be just off off that that you know not only we able to tour and, and and get so much stuff going on because I'm I'm really seeing that that your name like is, is slowly blowing up. Like if you ask me personally, you're like to me I, I view you as like the the J Cole of the underground right now. That's that's my my opinion. You know what I mean on on your music right now. Hey, I take it, man. That's one of my favorites. You know, uh, definitely as a teenager, man. Uh, I'm not a fan of what my influences, man. I I love me some Cole, so I appreciate that. And one thing that I'm I'm really big on is you know trying to do something a little different. Like I love how the internet you know brings everyone closer together. But as far as the music, I think. There's a lot of quantity, you know. Uh, this this is my opinion, man. But not so much quality. So I'm more, I'm more like quality of quantity. Like I got, I got plenty of songs, but I would rather put it out at more of a control space. Um, so I say, uh, you know, they just let it sit and let it marinate, and then when it's time for the next one, fine. But you know, I feel like uh, artists feel they feel short because it's a lot of great records. They kind of get put under the radar because you're putting out three or four albums a year which is dope you know i salute that because even making one album like i don't think a lot of folks understand how time for song and how strenuous that is but i just like to move a little different with it man i'm I really like to just like even when i'm listening to music like i really like to sit on the album for a while and grow with the album and grow with the music and that's what i would love folks to do with mine as well sure. okay now i gotta ask you yeah. for right now what are your top five for right now that you're listening to in terms of hip hop? Oh man, it's, it's gonna be actually <laughs> maybe tomorrow it'll change, but uh, man, so I'm listening. I'm still on that J Rock out hard, man. Okay, That's a wonderful album. Like that new J Rock is just crazy. Um, I'm still on uh, Cole's recent album. I think I'm going to name it out. That'll be easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the latest, the latest J. Wright release, the latest J. Cole release. Um, I don't know if you heard that Black Milk, that season. Oh, that's, Black that's Milk? Crazy. Black Milk? I, I, did a, a, yeah. I did a Black Milk mixtape about 10 years ago. It, it was uh, featuring Black Milk and Sky Zoo. Uh, I'm, I'm I, actually he's coming. He's, he's he's coming to town, and I'm tinkering on idea of uh, seeing him and maybe possibly trying to meet with him. So, you know that that's stay tuned with that. So you know what I'm saying. But Black Milk, man, Black, I've been a fan of him for for a minute. I mean, I I, I got his. I was late to the his, game. His first, his I got his first yeah, he, album. He crazy. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean, but he he uh he actually tours with a live band, but. I actually did not get a chance to listen to his his last album. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but it's definitely. Still, I think it dropped like what in February, early. It, I think it dropped early in the year, but it's still in rotation now. Oh man! If I got my little title playlist on, I'm not skipping it. You know? Man, if I got my shit on software. I get skipped. Okay. Oh man, this this last voice album. That, that yes. Man. You mean you mean talking about Prime? That's an amazing. Talk about Prime too? Huh? 
Are you speaking on Prime no, 2? Uh, Book of Ryan. Okay, okay, okay. Book of Ryan. Yeah, I, yeah, I, that's, uh, that's, that's... I, I still not played nothing from from that album off off the off this uh off this show just yet. But I mean, I, I'm getting I'm getting a lot of good reviews because people just hit me up and I just. And I really just just vibe out and just really see what everybody rocking with and, and what's if it's quality, and and I know if 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 it's really you know what I'm saying people really vibe into it yeah I, I definitely always give it a listen so Royce the five nine he always you know what I mean he always come come with a uh, come with something you know what I mean oh yeah man just just the entire like the concept alone is just crazy and you know just the way it was executed like deserves definitely something at least one listen and then like I said if you ask me two hours from now like you'll get a different list but I gotta think that that Black Thought Knife wanted to join in that shit bro. oh oh yes I yes uh I forgot what it's called but I, I already uh yeah I, I, I got the you know I got that in rotation for this podcast for for mm-hmm. practically for the whole month um, that it, he just dropped the EP oh, and just everything on there was just was just hitting everything. I'm already waiting for it. It's called uh, it's your experience with Thoughts, man. It's, it's a really easy list, man. Like I think it's on like seven or eight tracks. Right. You ain't stripping nothing. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy good, but yeah, man. I I like, if you go through my playlist and I have. A, just on hip hop alone, like I listen to a little bit of everything. Like, okay. I listen to just as much trap music as you know jazz or just as much underground. I just, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for a good story and a genuine story, you know. Okay. But yeah, those, those are just my five for right now. For sure. All right. Now, outside of hip hop, what other types of music do you listen to do, do to generate any ideas outside of hip hop? Yeah, I like I, I, I'm a sucker for the soul. Um, Marvin Gaye, um, Johnny Taylor, mm-hmm. shit man, the OJs, uh, David Russell, Tim Taylor, mm-hmm. Del Fonny, I don't know, like I, I love a lot of the older music, I just love the spirit, you know, like the thing that you can hear, like, you know, it, it, it's still relative to the day, um, I listen, you know, I dabble a little bit into the rock, uh, so Jimi Hendrix, Obviously, that's probably my biggest influence from that era. Um, I grew up on Lincoln Park. Surprised that that might be my random one to throw in there. <laughs> yes. Uh, just, just a little bit of everything, man. Uh, I, I just like shit that sounds good. Little Dragon, the show. Uh, I'm just going to start rambling here in a little bit. Thundercat, he's never dropped anything that's disappointed me. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Daniel Caesar. Mm-hmm. Like his, I, just love, I love his creative mind. It's, but yeah, I just I love genuine sound and music. Just to pretty much sum, just to pretty much sum it up. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Before before we wrap up this, the the interview, yeah. What message do you have for all those listening and for the world? What what, what do you have to say? Man, do what the fuck that makes you happy. Don't live off anyone else's opinion because they don't really care. Believe in yourself because nobody else will. And once you do, ironically, they will too. So um, do what makes you happy, man. Um, don't don't live for anyone else's happiness. Don't live up to anyone else's expectations because you will never meet them and you will never love yourself. So don't worry about what other folks' opinions will be just do what the fuck you want to do in the words of Devin and do <laughs> <laughs> word is bond this is anti lily yeah peace chilling right here on uh, DJ yes, Melodic love. One's Boom Bap Cafe radio yes sir uh, you're the first shout out my boy DJ Melodic One for reaching out yeah we the first one man try to top this shit it's the, try to top <laughs> it's the first of many interviews to come um, I, I, oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I wanna, I would definitely would like to get in contact with A1. Uh, I, I've been a fan of you even before Don't Sleep existed. So you know what I mean? It, it'd be great to. to oh, that's a big bro. Yes. That's, my big, that's one of my mentors, man. For sure. So we can make that happen. Definitely. Like definitely. I, I definitely would like to get him. 
on the program and, and, and really chop it up because I, I see uh, uh, it's the 10 year anniversary of one of his albums. Yeah, that beautiful movie was right. the 10th anniversary, I want to say. Oh, it was either the week before we started the tour or the first day of the tour. The young, beautiful Louisville is 10 years old. I was 15 when that shit dropped, just to put it in perspective. So even wow. that made in my eyes. And he's got, I love him so much because he's got nothing but gems for me. And he's not afraid to share the most important. You know what I'm saying? Word, word. He just wants yeah, that's a true big brother, man. It's a true big brother. So, yo, definitely make that happen, bro. Definitely. I like, I like to thank you once again, uh, Anti Lily, for coming on this program, like taking you. time out your day like you, like and your life to make this happen. What is Bond? Oh, yeah, man. It's crazy to even be able to have a conversation with you. So, I don't want it to fall on deaf ears, man. I appreciate you just as much. Man. Anything you need, bro. Actually, I got you on that A1. That's just one conversation. So don't worry about that. And if you need anything else, I got you, my G. Thank you for the platform, and thank you for, you know, rocking with the album. Because it took a lot to make it. So appreciate the love, bro. Keep on pushing. Word. Straight up. Peace, peace. It's your boy, Anti Lily, coming straight from that H-Town. It's with my boy, DJ Melodic. You are listening to the Bone Bass Cafe. Nothing but the real shit, you feel me? Sometimes the pride can get in the way of your blessings. 
more I grew, the more we grew apart I was selfless, I couldn't see he was selfish from the start That's what I get for thinking with my heart Instead of using that in my mind at the same time That's when I realize That it's every man for theyself But still I understand that every man needs some help You realize every man, that it's every, every, every man for That's what my papa used Every man Every, every, every man for this show Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, one more time, one time. This young gang tough One time for my nigga Phonics Let's go uh, okay, I'm saying that my sayings be slaying niggas who hating who wait with anticipation Praying that I lose my weight, but I've really been losing weight Not physically, talking mentally Time is of the essence, ain't no time to wait for anything I'm waiting for my time, I'm aware with my eyes I'm tanking whoever trying to take my place in this line As if you try that cut and shit Obvious you don't know who you fucking with I'm saying lyrical substances, my nigga fuck your supplements You gassed up, but fuck that cheese You see I'm shredding, I've been smoking on that gas I grab my clip and unlet it, then reload it I'm just floating, I ask myself when I'm it. Sitting in this DeVille, I'm looking for heaven Believe it, nigga Feel I'm the best, but ain't never been no conceited, nigga Just trying to position myself just to touch the ceiling, nigga My pops told me to invest in my grind And invest in the watch to try to make the best of your time I pray to God in regards to all the stress on my mind Ask him to guide me if I'm lost Or I can't see them signs I see you niggas talking Only made you a bigger target The strength of my aim is saying You gon' need you a bigger target They logo ain't big enough Can't match my wits with the sense of urgency that I'm showing Bringing surgery to opponents I'm so Surgically superb, and certainly they didn't even know it. But best believe they gon' feel all the pain the nigga be showing. I'm lacing my size tens, lacing my little brother with the advice I'm providing. But I could use some for myself, a little nigga smoking and switching, committing my sins. Pictures I paint, I call it the art of surviving. Hey, Mr. Van Gogh, can't you lend the ear for me to tell the stories to all these niggas that need to hear? Keep it moving, that's how I was taught to do. You got a dream, little nigga, then that's what you ought to do. It's time to come up, come up, and tie nigga. Yeah, boy, it's time to come up, come up Tell me what the fuck you waiting for Pressure got me on that pressure. Potting with my niggas on how to get a hedge, and that's the only direction. 
direction, we accept it, ain't stepping back no more If I fall off, it ain't gonna be because I'm caught off guard My whole life I adapted, no fuck with change, but shit I had to accept it I'm at the point where I expected, took a loss, but learned a lesson as I order my steps These niggas be scheming, you gotta watch them That's why I keep one on my wrist to remind me this time around They gon' know we ain't coming down unless it's on the boulevard My city love them candy cars, below the sun, moon, and the stars Woke up next to my queen, so I lose inspiration when you can stare at your dreams Harder to sleep, Funix told me he got me on whatever I need is likewise Told my brother A1 it was nice outside, now let's ride